Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. With NVIDIA's RTX 40 series poised to launch later this year, most likely around September time, gamers are understandably enthusiastic. After all, the performance of this next generation of GeForce is going to be significantly more than even the RTX 3090 Ti, around 2.2 to 2.4 times faster greater, which I'm sure you'll agree is a great generation upon generation leap. But there's been a very interesting tweet and rumour that's been circulating over the past few days, and that concerns the architecture surrounding Lovelace, which of course is the architecture inside RTX 40. Now for some time now we've actually known many of the specifications and we've covered them on the channel for various RTX 40 SKUs. Not only have they been leaked because of, well, leakers, but also with the NVIDIA hack that happened, a lot of specifications just kind of came into the wild. And we've discussed them on the channel before, so I won't go over all of them in this video because it's just going to eat up time. But now a very interesting rumor has been circulating that Lovelace, the 102 variant specifically, actually has some hopper elements within the uh, architecture itself. Now it's worth noting that the tweet here is decidedly vague and most likely because whoever told this leaker this information has asked them to keep it uh, pretty much as quiet as possible. But I'm currently doing some digging, we'll get more into that in just a second. Now Hopper, for those who don't know, is a GPU which is a little different. It's essentially designed around the data center. So for things like AI, high performance computing, and so on and so on, it's not necessarily something that you're going to be running, say, crisis on. And obviously this is a slightly different architecture in that, uh, in that respect. So there are some possibilities we could be looking at. And one of the more obvious ones, although it doesn't seem to be implied in this tweet, is the TSMC 4NM process. For quite a long time, we actually thought that Hopper was utilizing TSMC's 5NM, but obviously Jensen, the CEO of NVIDIA, then came out and said, no, fooled you, it's actually the TSMC 4NM. So it is somewhat possible that the highest end SKUs in the uh, Lovelace lineup could actually be manufactured on the 4NM process. Another possibility is that we're looking at some other technology within Hopper that has been basically used for the highest end SKUs. For example, some changes in the shader or tensor cores or some other thing. And this could potentially make sense if NVIDIA are also going to be leveraging this product in you know a new titan class card and then maybe they might fuse off specific parts i'm spitballing here again i've reached out to multiple sources and i'm trying to find out exactly what is being implied in this tweet but it is very interesting uh, lovelace is currently being taped out and yeah i mean ultimately this is going to be a skew or sorry an architecture which i suspect is going to be you know, I, I just suspect Lovelace is going to be a love-hate relationship. Ultimately, the performance of Lovelace is going to be awesome. And obviously, you've got, you know, new features that's going to be coming to the table. Um, I'm hearing of DS DLSS3 is almost certainly real. Possibly going to launch before uh, RTX 40, although personally, I'm not waiting with bated breath on that one. I think it could be afterwards, although I'm getting a lot of conflicting information. But ultimately, the power consumption figures are going to be really what's kind of the owie. And I do believe the more I'm hearing about Narve 31, that the performance target of Narve 31 is probably somewhere around 2.5 times, not 3 times. I feel that the 3 times figure is almost certainly in reference to either the T-flops or potentially ray tracing. In fact, one of the sources that I've been speaking to kind of recently essentially have told me that the Sony patent that we covered on the channel for the PlayStation 5 Pro, it does seem to be AMD inspired. In fact, I was told essentially it is basically the RDNA 3 patent. It is possible that that information is wrong. However, to go back what I said in the PlayStation 5 Pro video, yeah, um, I basically think that the PS5 Pro is almost certainly being worked on. In fact, multiple of my sources have told me it is but to go back to what i said in that video it just doesn't make sense for sony to essentially create their own ray tracing technology um now i can understand if they took 
AMD's tech and then tweaked it a little bit, you know, that would be okay and that I could get behind. But for them to just go in a totally different direction, it doesn't make any sense, particularly given RDNA 3, of course, is going to have improved ray tracing performance anyway. And we've known that for so long now with multiple leaks. So in my personal opinion, I think RDNA 3 and Lovelace are going to be a very interesting, I think they're going to be really fighting one another. And this also, of course, brings us to, well, AMD, as there's a very interesting patent which is actually filed by AMD. It's actually filed quite a while ago, but recently has been published. I will link the patent in the video description, of course, and patents, as always, could end up not becoming a product or the patent itself could be implemented in a very different way. But basically, this patent is particularly interesting given the timing. AMD have been on an acquisition splurge recently and they've actually bought quite a number of companies. And one of perhaps the most important ones that they've bought is actually Zilinux, who are synonymous with things like FPGAs. And FPGAs, of course, are very important industry and can be used for a multitude of different things. And yeah, they're even used in, for example, um, you know, uh, new new versions of old consoles. I'm sure you guys have seen like the, you know, clone consoles of the Super Nintendo or the Genesis or whatever. And obviously, you know, FPGAs are extremely customizable. And one of the benefits of uh, AMD's approach in buying this company and of course all of their stacking technology is that they can create extremely custom designs depending on the usage scenario. And we've actually seen now a new patent for a machine learning chiplet, which basically becomes part and parcel of the IO of the processor. Now I'll talk about the processor part in just a moment because there's an asterisk there. And we've actually seen a lot of machine learning accelerator chiplet patents from AMD. Actually, I covered one a while back on the channel. I think it was like last year. I don't remember the date from the top of my head because there's been so many patents. But obviously, machine learning isn't not, it's just, it's becoming a massive industry. Now, to go back to what I said about the, the asterisk, the reality is that this could be used for everything from processors, particularly with, say, I don't know, like server CPUs, for example, down to server GPUs, or it could even be theoretically used in something along the lines of a laptop, because ultimately machine learning can be used for so many different applications. Quite literally, it could be used from everything from, you know, video games down to trying to map the uh, you know, trying to create Skynet, basically. Obviously, <laughs> there's a little bit of a grey area in between that, but still, you get my point. And I think AMD being able to offer its customers, for example, in an Epic server, extremely robust, um, customizable APU slash SOC packages in this element, in this in, in this kind of you know vein, would just make a ton of sense. And finally, there's another very interesting thing that I wanted to throw in on this video, and it concerns the Xbox Series S and X and availability, and basically Microsoft throwing its money around. So. Obviously, one of the things that we've really noticed across, you know, the past couple of years uh, is basically chip shortages. And this has affected GPUs heavily on the PC, but also even cars have been really affected by this and the next generation consoles, or I guess this generation of consoles as well. And ultimately, a lot of it has down, it comes down to multiple things, including availability of everything from VRMs and memory chips and substrate and, you know, everything down to, of course, the actual processors themselves. The PlayStation 5, the Xboxes, and a host of other things from AMD are all utilized TSMC's 7NM process, which will start to shift to the 5NM process, at least for AMD, uh, later this year. And this means that essentially all these companies are vying ultimately for production capacity. And basically there's a rumor that Microsoft, again, I'll link all of this in the video description, Microsoft basically f uh, have essentially paid to increase the priority of its chip production. Now I wanna say right off the bat that it's very hard to know this unless someone at AMD or you know whatever company actually confirms this to be true. And when we're looking at, and please correct me if I'm wrong here, but I haven't seen an exact breakdown 
of sales figures. The PS5 does seem to be outselling the Xbox in ter terms of total but more recently, this is apparently when this deal started to become into effect. And this is why, allegedly, one of the reasons anyway, that the Xbox has more availability and you can start to get them more readily than, let's say, the PlayStation 5. However, it is worth noting that the Xbox kind of bifurcates its needs. Sure, with the PlayStation 5, there is both the disc-based system and the disc-less based system. But with the Xbox, you've got the Xbox Series S and X, hence before being referred to as X and X so I don't go insane and basically speaking the Series S chip I actually forgot to take a note of this so that's my bad but I think it's like 60% smaller than the Series X chip so this basically means that when you have like a wafer you can basically just get more chips out of the same wafer versus a Series X and this means that basically Microsoft can sell more consoles from its TSMC allocation so that's possibly one of the reasons that we're seeing this. Now, there are a ton of other possibilities as well. It could just be something to do with the demand. It could be that Sony are having other issues in the supply chain. Who knows? I do find it quite interesting, though, that uh, this rumor has popped up. I mean, Microsoft throwing its weight around does kind of make sense from the sales perspective. Ultimately, they do want as large an install base as possible, Especially when, of course, they're, you know, buying all of these games companies and so on. And it's actually contrary to what I'd initially heard. One of the things that I was told initially is that Sony actually put money down. This is when the consoles were first being kind of manufactured, like, way back around launch, actually just prior to launch. I'd heard that Sony had actually managed to secure a higher allocation than Microsoft. So it's possible the tables have turned. Then again, of course, both Sony and Microsoft do need to lock in supply allocation. And they can't just, you know, be like, ah, this month I want, like, X number. Next month I want X number. You can't just kind of do it on the fly. You need to kind of lock this stuff in ahead of schedule. And this is one of the reasons that we saw some of the silicon shortages. Just really simple. I mean, there's a ton of reasons. But, yeah, obviously with the whole work from home thing, for obvious reasons, basically just the supply could not ramp up fast enough. And it was, it was a whole thing. I do suspect supply and demand are going to start to level off and we're going to start to become a little, it's going to start to become a little easier to get hold of consoles and other bits. So, yeah. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, well, it's YouTube. You know what to do. You leave a like here, of course, and also sub to the channel if you've not. And if you've enjoyed the video, share it with your friends because, you know, engagement and all of that jazz. And leave a comment down below, actually, what have you found regarding availability of consoles in your specific region? Have you noticed it's easier to get, like, let's say, an Xbox Series S? What about the Series X, PlayStation 5? Let me know your thoughts down below. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.